Hello, hello, hello. Uh, my name is Nathan Johnson, and I'm super excited to welcome you to our continuing ed at QC on color correcting. So um, I'm going to give it just a minute till um, the people start rolling in. And as everybody starts rolling in, I'll, I'll start telling you about why it's so incredibly important, exactly what we're going to do in this webinar, and um, all the magic that we're going to be able to make by learning some advanced skills in makeup. So this is gonna be a tremendous amount of fun, and I wanna thank you guys um, ahead of time. Thank you so very much for uh, taking the time to spend part of your evening with me. Hello, Christy in Texas. Uh, hi, Melissa, hi, everybody. So glad you're all joining. You know, the numbers are picking up pretty quick for this one, which is awesome. You know, very often, um, the majority of our views happen later because, you know, time-wise, it's not appropriate for everybody. So I just wanna say to you guys, um, thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in, but double thank you, no problem if you can't come in live. They are always archived, all right? Every one of these is archived. So you never miss anything. If there's anything that's confusing, anything that's weird, you can always, always, always go back. Um, you can watch them on our YouTube page or our Instagram page. Okay, so uh, once again, today's topic is going to be concealing and color correcting. And in case you can't tell from what you're seeing in front of you, I'm gonna be the model. I, n n those of you who are used to watching these videos, you know you never see me like this. This is the real me, this is the real thing without my, um, me using my art on my own face, right? So um, you're going to learn uh, firsthand on me exactly what I do and the things I'm gonna cover on me are predominantly the things you're gonna be covering on your clients most often and bravo Australia for taking the time to tune in. I mean, it's pretty early for you guys, so uh, bravo, I'm super excited. So uh, once again, my name is Nathan Johnson. Now you're gonna notice, I am, um, this topic is like super serious and uh, super exciting. So you're gonna notice I'm gonna be referencing my computer a lot. That's because I took really, really specific notes because I wanna, those of you that know me know that I tend to spiral off when I get an idea or something excites me, right? So I made very specific notes to be able to call myself back should I get lost, which sometimes I do because I get excited. Let's face the facts. I get excited. All right. So there is a good, there are a good number of you here right now. So let's talk Turkey. First things first. Okay. For those of you who have been tuning in um, to the last few, I've been having a Facebook issue. I don't know what it is. They hate me. Um, so, sometimes two and three times through the webinar, I'm getting booted off. If that happens, if I get booted, it isn't you. It's me. Give it a second. Refresh the page. And then you'll see um, there'll be there'll be a new fresh link you can go to. But don't worry if I get booted off and there's any questions or concerns, leave, just write in the the feed below. Oh my God, I can't get back on. And Karina, who's at work way after hours to make sure that this can happen, is going to make sure that everybody is directed to how back to how to get back on. Right. So I apologize to you guys about that in advance. And we've tried everything. I've got the fastest internet speed. Everything else, God only knows what it is. Okay, so. Um, all that matters is that we are here together and uh, we are diving into something incredible and magical. So um, once again, first things first, my name's Nathan Johnson. If you don't know who I am, I'm very proud and privileged to be the executive uh, makeup artist at QC Makeup Academy. That means that um, in conjunction with their uh, powerful team, I create the courses for you. These courses are put together based on the best of the best of my education and classic educational technique to set you up for major success. I've been in the industry for over 20 years. In that time, I'm most known for my work with celebrities. I've worked with over 700. By the end of this year, uh, it's probably gonna be eight by the end of this year. Um, uh, some of them, the names you would know, Paul McCartney, Liza Minnelli, RuPaul, Alicia Keys, Kate McKinnon, Paul Abdul, Leah Michelle, um, on and on, right? I was the artist on two seasons of TV's Project Runway. I've been a global artist and international educator for brands including Sephora, Cover FX. I have had the uh, privilege of designing more than 20 New York Fashion Week shows. That is only to tell you that I came from nothing, nowhere, right? A single blinking stoplight town, and I was able to succeed in the world of makeup. So whatever your dreams are, whatever your passions are, the only thing that's ever going to stop you, my loves, is you. It's the only thing, okay? So, um... That's the skinny. So what are we doing today? We're, we're doing continuing ad. We're doing um, conceal and color correct. Um, the reason these have to go hand in hand is because there's times you really don't need to color correct. There's times you have to color correct. And we're gonna start to know when, why, what, right? And it's gonna come through our knowledge of color science. And for those of you that are QC students, um, 
you're gonna see um and i'm gonna hold it to the best of my ability so you guys can see it but um i'm trying not to use paper unless i have to so i'm gonna be holding up some of my um some images here so i'll be casting them for those of you who are qc students you're gonna recognize these assignments right you're gonna recognize these these are gonna be your best friend like some people doubt me when I say put so much practice into the education as it's put together in this course because it is not this education is not put together willy-nilly it's not just exercises to waste your time and what you're about to see those of you that took the course you're gonna know whether or not you rushed through that section or whether or not you gave it the time it deserved because believe it or not it's a huge part of color correcting color science and exactly where we're gonna go but here's the good news no such thing is too late. So if you rush through it, that's what tomorrow's for, right? So diving in right away. What is the purpose of color correcting? Why are we going to do it? We are going to color correct so that we can perfect the skin, make it look even more perfect, right? So but let's dive in, right? Um, makeup theory, color correcting for flawless skin. Purpose and importance. Let's be honest, color correcting shouldn't be but it's actually, it's an advanced technique. Very few people actually know how to do it. And after this webinar, it's kind of gonna blow your mind how easy it is. It's like unbelievably easy when you really think about it. But because you watch people teaching you who don't know what they're doing, they way overcomplicate it. And then you think you're pasting big swatches on your face and you're not. If you paste big swatches on your face, you gotta paste more to hide it, right? Makeup perfecting flawlessness, it's a light, art it's literally like a master painter at a painting it's a super light fine art and we're gonna look at we're gonna we're gonna look at and talk about that right so what do you do you utilize shadow you utilize highlight you utilize color correctives you will utilize highlight shadows color correctives to neutralize any unwanted darknesses on the face or any unwanted colors like darknesses predominantly here age spots unwanted colors red that goes too far because if i put blush down here and still had all this do you see how my blush is just going to be a red line right across my nose color science can transform all of that for us so it's all about counterbalancing the unwanted colors, right? So the final effect will be to dramatically improve the appearance of skin for an extremely natural, normal, perfect complexion. Not like it's caked in makeup, a naturally perfect complexion. What's the biggest mistake people make? I already alluded to it, right? You'll see a ton of those YouTube videos where people swatch color correct all over and then get a beauty blender and pound it. Well, that's, you're going in the direction of like, trendy drag makeup. Um, the biggest mistake people make is big swatches of color painted everywhere. Mastery of this is fine detailed work. And we're, we're going to talk about a lot about that. But if you cake the product on, you get a cakey look. People will often say, how do I not have my makeup look cakey? Well, don't cake it on. Don't cake it on and it won't look cakey. When you really learn makeup correctly, that's a question I most often get from people before they've taken Master Makeup Artistry. Once you take Master Makeup Artistry, you know how to make foundation perfect. You know how to balance eyes. You know how to do all of this. It's the people who don't know and don't take the time to learn that just have question after question. And if you just learned, you wouldn't have questions. You'd know. And then you'd be able to ask deeper questions that took you even further. That's what I'm trying to push everybody toward, right? That's what I'm trying to push everybody toward. Learn so that you can be a part of that greater community that's pushing positive techniques and not necessarily just... Um, continuing to do ones that might not be incredibly flattering for the client, right? So very important thing, know when to use concealer and when to use color correct. Important thing before we dive in, right? So um, when do we use um, concealer? When do we use color correct? You will use um, concealer if whatever it is you're trying to hide is extremely light. If it's so light that it will barely, if at all, show through the foundation, right? You will use concealer. If it's something that is going to cast a shadow through the foundation or the concealer, you're definitely gonna see an irregularity in color. It's gonna cause you to not be able to perfect things you're trying to, like a blush, that in my case you see would ride right up over my nose, go right beyond, start to go right up my eyebrows, because I'm naturally, I'm cool toned, right? So there's natural reds come out of me even more and the whole face starts looking red. So. Correcting allows me to have features pop in exactly the ways and places I want. So that's the kind of power that it's gonna give you. But you know, sometimes you'll see, like I'm, when I do the demo, I'm not gonna color correct everywhere. 
I'm gonna color correct in a few aggressive spots, then I'm gonna show you what happens when I put a tinted moisturizer on over it, how everything just pulls together, right? And then we'll see, are there areas that I didn't do enough? And then we'll experiment with color, correct, or concealer to see exactly what is the best way to hide stuff, right? And that's, um, that's how you're gonna learn. But as you start to do this, you're gonna to start to see your mind is gonna become like a Rolodex. And you're just gonna look at people and know, ah, I need this shade, I need to mix a little of this. And here's an interesting thing. You can actually, and we'll talk about this a little more at the end, and if I forget, remind me, we can, um, you can start to make your own concealers into color correcting concealers with slight additions of color. Now, are they gonna work universally on everybody? No. Here's the important thing to remember. When I start talking to you about things, and you know, I know you guys got the handout, and I'll pull it up again now. I know you guys got this handout, right? It was sent to you, and if anybody didn't get it, um, put a message below, um, and Karina will um, either put up a link, or she'll, she, uh, she's a genius. She'll find a way to get it to you, and I hope she doesn't kill me for saying that. But you're gonna see, like these, a color in its straight form doesn't work. It, there's no way it could, like, let's say it's me and who's somebody you all know. Um, me and, okay, does everybody know uh, Tina Turner, all right? Me and Tina Turner. We're not gonna need exactly the same color, right? She's super dark, rich brown, and I'm light pale. So it's about finding where, finding this and making it work within its undertone. So remember, nothing is going to be, thank you, Karina, I see you put it up. Nothing is gonna be so extremely specific that you'll be like, you use straight this. Uh, sometimes it will. But very often you're gonna have to mix some other shades in it to make it match people's skin. But that's all easy once you understand the color science, right? So as we start to dive right in, um, one of the things that I, I wanna tell you Oh, oh, oh. Um, one of the things I want to tell you, I think, um, most of all, is that one of the biggest mistakes that people make, and the reason people will color correct and it will fail, is they don't realize how important the precision is. I use a brush this big. This is actually the concealer brush that came with the Tarte. You're going to notice this product on it because it's my own personal brush, and I was just utilizing it a little while ago. So because it's for me and me alone, I don't have to clean it between every application. I was using it today, I'll probably clean it tonight, right? So um, see how I can get right in and I can cut along hard lines. Now I'm not putting any product on right now. You gotta cut along hard lines in order to be able to make the effect happen. If I put color correct here and here and I only need it here, because I'm brightening this area, I undo what I'm trying to do in here. Interesting, right? How often do you see people color correct and then just wipe it all under there? Well, you've already half undone what you're trying to do. And then you, if you look, if you've tried that yourself, and then you look, look back at some of the photos when you've done it, you'll be like, oh my God, sure enough, my dark circles are still available, visible. Yes, they are, because you didn't follow the, the correct steps in the correct way, right? Okay, so let's, um, let's talk about uh, color theory itself. The basics of color theory are essential really to succeed as a makeup artist. You have to have them or you're not going to be able to identify the difference in people's undertones. Who's warm? Who's cool? Who's neutral? All of that, it's, it's makeup 101, right? And when you understand that, you're already going to be pretty far ahead of your competition because you're starting to understand the mixes of colors that make people up. And that's a super important thing, right? So here's one thing that I wanna start with that you know, normally, we all know it, right? We all know it, but when we look at it in this sense because we don't think about it this way, it usually blows people's minds again. It blows mine every time I think of it. Three colors, the primary colors. You all know what they are, right? Red, yellow, blue. Red, yellow, and blue, the three primary colors, make every other color. So every foundation shade is blended out of those three colors. Now, one of the greatest things, if you guys ever get the opportunity to do, and I used to have the opportunity to work with um, a great company, um, Three Custom Color Specialists, who I'm gonna recommend some product to you guys um, from later, and they made everything. They made everything from these base shades. You just sit there and you'd mix everything from base colors. It's an amazing way to learn, and it's part of why my eye for color became so solid. When you realize that everything is made of three primary colors, that's how you can suddenly make sense of color correcting. Well, okay, if everything in me mixes from red, yellow, and blue, well, of course it makes perfect sense that combinations of those colors are gonna be able to neutralize this when sheerly laid over them, right? So that's an important thing, you know, that we're gonna look at. Now, this I'm kinda going out of order, but because I brought this up, it's important to say. 
this exercise. For you, those of you that are students, you know exactly what it is. It's taking a single shade and it's gradiating down. Now, number one, it's the way you're gonna do an ombre smoky eye, right? It's the use of a single color in multiple ways. But how does it correct to color science? If you try and color correct something and you're this opaque, you might overdo it and draw a tremendous amount of um, attention to it, right? Which might not necessarily be ideal. Um, whereas, you, based on how, okay, let's say it's super, super, what's the best way? Let's say that this is a, a salmon shade because salmon's gonna be ideal for my under eye. Say my dark circles are almost this dark. Well, yeah, then layering um, something that has an intensity about this is going to be ideal. But if the, sh if the shade is lighter, see how I'm moving along? If the shade is lighter, like mine is right here, I'm probably gonna wanna use it as sheerly as this so that it will mix with what's below it to change to the color above it. It's like fine art painting. So that brings us to the second one that, that you, those of you who have taken the course um, also know. Using two primary colors and letting them mix to perform a secondary color, which is a mix of um, two primaries, and tertiary colors, which are a primary and a secondary mixing, right? So here you can see what the layering of one shade over another, you can see how they're all, they can make so many colors just from two. That's the magic of color, the color science, and the color wheel, right? Which is pretty awesome. So remember, two primary colors make a secondary color. A secondary color and a primary color make tertiary colors. So you can make all these kind of color ranges. Very often, what you sometimes you are gonna be able to use a straight primary color to counter something, but very often you're gonna need um, ter secondary tertiary colors to really be able to do it. And we're gonna talk a lot about that. We're gonna talk about the colors you're gonna use, why you're gonna use them, when they will be most important, right? So what are complementary colors? Take out your color wheel, everybody. What are complementary colors? Let me get my color wheel. Okay, everybody got their color wheel open? Nah, that's the best way to see it. Complementary colors are opposites on the color wheel. So take a look. What is directly opposite blue? It's gonna be easiest, see if I show this to you just like this, it's gonna be a little bit, let's see if I go from this side. It's a little bit better. Directly opposite blue is um, orange, right? Um, directly opposite, look at your own, that'll be easier. Directly opposite blue is orange. So that means that these two, they're gonna do two things. Here's an interesting thing. Complementary colors can do two things. They make each other pop. So if you're doing an eye makeup and you put orange and blue side by side, they are going to pop, right? So that's an interesting thing, right? But what happens if you put orange over blue? It neutralizes the blue. So they'll pop side by side, but used together, they neutralize. So they start to become a flesh tone, depending on what grade of this you have and what grade of the, what grade of the blue you have and what grade of the orange you put over it, which takes us back to this one. See what I mean? What grade? And by grade, what shade? Where are you? What color value? And then as you layer it, you start to change the color below it because everything that exists here, every single one of those comes from combinations of blue and yellow. So the layering, the layering is what creates that effect, right? So um, that ends up being um, simple and easy. So what we realize is orange cancels blue, right? Um, so it will conceal or camouflage blue. When can this become extremely valuable and when might one use straight orange? Well, believe it or not, it's nearly, I, it's one of the most ideal shades to use on people who have deep skin, straight orange. But why, why don't many people teach this and why isn't it in many palettes, including our QC palette? because so many people do it wrong. They paint the orange under and it makes the under eye look really funny. It's gotta be used so sheer and with so much perfection that it's, uh, it's spot on perfect, neutralizing and reversing the color below it, right? Donna, finally you're here, I'm so glad. Thanks for joining us. Um, so that being said, um, complementary colors can make, can make colors pop. Like you know how people always, you're seeing everybody with blue eyes um, use a color that's opposite on the color wheel, right? You see everybody using um, oranges, um, you know, pinks, th things that are similar across the way in that sort of spectrum give the eye more pop. And you, you're, you sometimes you almost see to the point of overdoing it, right? But those colors can also neutralize each other. So it's, um, it's a smart, um, quick, easy way to learn. So Let's talk about dark circles, and we're gonna get into the demo shortly. I've got a bunch of things that I wanna talk about first, sort of theory and smarts behind it, right? Um, on most people, it depends on your shade, but on the majority of people, and we're gonna talk because there's a difference. Once you get to be a certain depth of color, there's some things that are a little easier. The things I'm gonna talk about will still work, but there's almost a shortcut. So 
Um, on most people, um, dark, dark circles kind of sit in a range, right? Um, dark people sit in a range. They're, d d dark, dark, dark circles sit in a range. They go from anywhere from blues, browns, purples, right? They can be any combination. In some areas, they'll, you'll see them transition in color. And that happens on an extraordinary number of people all the way uh, straight through the lightest to the deepest, 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 right? So in that respect, we have to start to consider what are the colors that are going to be most invaluable to to cover that on people. Well, you can get to the super nitty gritty, examine it, and then find the exact shade for each single part of it. Or you can suddenly go, okay, this, these, this person has colors that fall in that category. This is my shortcut, right? The greatest thing is going to be a salmony shade. A salmony shade is going to be the greatest thing. Now, remember, that's a salmony shade right there. But a salmony shade has to be in the, you know, even with the person's tone. So, you know, this is this is like a light one, light to medium, right? So you would want to deepen it a little bit if someone was a little bit deeper. You'd want to lighten it a little if somebody was much lighter. Otherwise, it's not going to look right, right? So the gradient depends on the person's tone, right? But because colors tend to, the dark circles tend to have that assortment of colors in them, a salmon shade layered over it will neutralize it because it has all the colors in it, the oranges and um, yellows in it that are needed to neutralize those colors that are hiding below it interesting right so there's an extraordinary amount of simple knowledge it's really simple when you're thinking about it right is it starting to click for you guys we haven't even gotten into the full nitty-gritty of it but you're probably hearing me just start to describe these simple things the way these colors mix thinking about the work you've done on the back of the arm and realizing it's super easy to neutralize darkness and color on the skin okay so um all right here we go um Rosacea, pimples, things like that. If, if you wake up with a lot of redness um, on the face, even if it's a pimple, if it's rosacea, if it's flushing, if it's uh, sens sensitization, which I, um, I have, especially this time of year, you've got to choose the right color to neutralize it, right? Now, because this is red and the red is really obvious on my skin, it's extremely obvious that I can use one specific thing if I use it sheerly, right? What is that? Like, look at your color wheel. Look at your color wheel and tell me what is across from red, right? Green. Now, look at the color wheel QC is giving you, right? Um, look at this color wheel. Do you see how the gradients and shades get lighter and lighter? Look at the red on my face and notice it's most similar to the innermost red, see? So what does that mean? Look opposite, mint green. Mint green is gonna be the greatest way to cover it. And if somebody's red is deeper, 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 the green has to get a little deeper. It doesn't mean it's gotta be applied thicker. It, exactly, exactly, um, uh, Megan, you neutralize, right? The green neutralizes. So you'll tap that into those areas. Here's the mistake, guys. Where's the mistake that people are gonna make? People are going to make the mistake of using it in areas it doesn't need to be used. Or even if you see on me, do you see it's most intense here and then it gets lighter? Well, don't use the same amount here that I use here. Or you're you're undoing it. You're, you're not... Um, that's where the artistry comes in. That's where per perfect artistry is, um, is so incredibly important. Um, now, another thing um, that I want to... Um, well... I'm going to talk about it in a second because there's like my my secret choice is salmon. Salmon is what what I see as like the savior for just about everybody. Okay, but there are a lot of other makeup artists who see the big save as yellow. All right, and I'm going to tell you about both the pros and cons of both, and then I want you as um as learners to try them out and see which sings more to you. Okay, because salmon has been a miracle for me, but some people do with salmon what I do with yellow. Why is that? Because we all have different hands and we all see colors differently. If you see colors differently, you may use different colors to make the adjustment, but that works because you're seeing things differently. And guess what? Salmon and orange, orange has yellow in it, right? People aren't often using straight yellow. They're often using yellows that have a little bit of a fleshy tone to them. So they, they're almost a little um, goldeny. So it ends up working in the same way, just a little bit more toward the yellow and a little bit less toward the orange. So it's kind of, it depends on people's interest, but the two, the two can be interchanged by some people. I prefer truthfully to use the salmon and I'm going to do the demo for you with the salmon. And I'm going to show you how um, salmon, because of the mix of colors in it, because remember, if it's salmon, it's pretty much a flesh shade. And, and I'm going to show you um, what can be done with one of my favorites. This is a product by Eve Pearl. Um, see the shade of salmon that is? 
it's a it's a skin tone that doesn't really look like anybody's skin tone right so when you use that do you see that that's got enough of so many things in it that it can neutralize reds it can neutralize deep colors salmons um, straight yellows they can neutralize a lot of things now if the things are super 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 dark and possibly dark I'm giving you sort of some some secrets and some um, some Advanced tips here if they're super super dark you got to intensify whichever complementary shade is in it to cancel it out You know what I mean? Um, now I see somebody say any suggestions for deep set eyes today's um today's I'm answering questions today only about conceal and color correct so if, um, if your questions are about deep set eyes, well, that's a feature, right? And concealer color correct isn't gonna do that. Yes, using the right highlights in the eyes and things will and eyeshadow applications, but today's questions, just to make sure that everybody stays focused on the learning, it's entirely gonna be about conceal and color correct. So it's something specific about the deep set eyes because the dark circles are a specific way or a specific, specific color, happy to answer it. But um, with, with the continuing ad webinars, I'm gonna stay on topic for you guys to make sure all of the people who have questions about the, the topic get answered because it can be extremely confusing, right? Okay, so um, salmon for me is, is the be-all, end-all color. It does a million miracle things for me, right? You may find it's yellow for you, or you may find as you start to play with your own shades that you mix your own magic color. And don't be afraid of that because guess what? Where do great colors come from? Makeup artists mixing them. Color science. You could discover the next great thing. So don't be afraid to play and experiment, okay? Super, super, super important. So let's talk about um, what each color is used for common uses for the color take out your sheet guys let's just go over it together take a look at it right away okay green we've already talked about green and you can look at your um, chart it's gonna neutralize redness based on the gradient of the redness in the skin right so green is gonna neutralize red yellow see isn't it see what I wrote in here yellow it neutralizes purple so it's great for some bruises some under eye circles some ruddiness some ivory in the skin now why is yellow sometimes people's answer to everything because whether warm or cool, remember, yellow is a primary color. Everybody has some yellow in their skin. Everybody. Some people have way more. Like if you consider people, um, people who are Asian, you can sometimes often really see the yellow in their skin. You know, whereas then you look at somebody who's like cool toned Irish. Well, it's much like I've got the I've got some of the Irish tone in me, right? It's a big part of my lineage. So you look at me and you don't see the yellow as much. But guess what? It's still there. That's why these can work hand. That's why yellow can be such a miracle for people. Um, but notice it says it cover, covers the um, bruises, under eye circles, ruddiness um, in ivory skin tones. Doesn't mean yellow can't be on other people, but once you start taking yellow and putting it on deeper skins, because it's light, it can make them look ashy. But we're gonna talk about that, right? Orange, um, under eye circles, brown age spots, and some ruddiness in deeper skin tones. See. What, what's orange made of, right? Red and yellow. So that's why it works on the red of your skin tones. It's still the yellow, right? It's getting what we need in there to start to create the corrections and start to transform what can be done on the face, right? So that's why the orange, when people have dark, just dark skin, you would not believe, you know, someone's saying here for darker skin tones, what would you use? Orange, that's exactly what I'm saying here, right? You use orange. And yes, you use straight orange orange if you take global beauty you are gonna watch watch with your own eyes as the brightest orange is gonna go on dark circles below the eyes and they are gonna vanish why because they it's used extremely sheer it mixes with the darkness below and you know um, because if you look at the orange what's it exactly opposite it's exact it's, it's, it's the shades of orange if you look at the yellow orange the red orange they're opposite all of those purples those purple blues which is often what comes through in the dark colors on deep skin people below deep skin people's eyes right so um, those are what you sort of um, that's so when you put the orange on it neutralizes those um, Haley, that is not um, a stupid question. Ruddiness isn't a, well, uh, you're asking if it's a skin tone. Ruddiness is when people have that red in the skin. This is, what you're seeing right here in me now is ruddiness. There's ruddiness in my complexion. All that, that uncontrolled red in my face right now is ruddiness. Um, some people can come in in the winter and just have ruddiness in their face from, from the cold, right? So um, salmon. Salmon is in here because it's my, my miracle shade and it's like a, a cheat sheet that, um, uh, Monica, what about um, um, dark age spots? Well, it depends on the skin tone. If someone has dark age spots and they are um, lighter toned, well, it depends on how deep they are. You can try the salmon, but because of the tonality of the age spot, you're gonna, you might have to go a little bit deeper depending on the person's tone, adding a little bit more orange to it, maybe a little bit more pink to it. If the person has deep skin, it's often going to be orange. But if the person has super, super deep skin, which we're gonna talk about below, um, 
salmon, sometimes a beautiful warm brown will do it. And you'll see, there's one of them right here in the kit because that warm brown right there where my thumb is, that warm brown will often undo some of the darknesses in the very deep tones because it's just rich enough, it's got just enough orange in it to pop up those areas, but then not make it look ashy. Because yes, some people can be so dark that even the orange will make them look ashy. So you've always got to take in, what is ashy for those of you that don't, that don't understand? Um, ashy is, God, what's the best way for me to describe it? It's when um, people with deep rich skin start to get like a white ghostly glow to their skin. Um, so it's not particularly flattering. It's got like a ghostly effect. It almost looks gray or sickly. Um, and it usually happens when people haven't properly matched an undertone. So that can even happen with color corrects and concealers, right? So it can even happen in, in those spots. Um, so now I've already told you why yellow is the key to uh, the, the, the answer to a lot of people's prayers. You know, yellow counters purple. There's, there can be, so yellow, when used appropriately because it's in so many shades, it can start to you know counter basic age spots all kinds of stuff in the lighter tones now you know when it works with the gradient like this is um a, a makeup artist friend of mine who swears by yellow the way that i swear by salmon he says the, like imagine a port wine stain do you guys know what a port wine stain is it's when somebody has one of those birthmarks they can be anywhere on their face i had a, I had a second cousin who had a port wine stain that went all the way from her forehead, ringed around her eye and below her eye. It's super, super, super dark purple, right? That's why they call it port wine. It looks, and it's, it's just like wine spilled on the skin, right? So it's, it's not unattractive at all. It's just um, dark and purple on traditionally very light skin. So how do you neutralize it? He swears by adding more yellow. The deeper the intensity of the shade, the more the intensity, it's like, you know, like a speedometer. The more the intensity of the speed, um, you, like let's say that the, the color is the speed limit, right? So it's 60. You know you've got to put more brake on to reach 60. So uh, more gas to reach 60. So you're like, in my case, I would add more salmon and then I'd see what the salmon did. And then based on what that did, I would add another complementary color. So, you know, if I saw the salmon got me where I needed to go, but there was now the purple was peeking through, I'd know I needed more yellow, which means I could put a little more yellow in the salmon, right? So um, those, are, those are the directions where you start to really play with the color. Is this making sense to you guys? Are you starting to see how all of these can work? Now, yellow and salmon and orange, for, as we start to go to deeper, orange and brown, as we start to go to the deeper tones, those can be some easy and quick things to use and grab and to do as a one size, you know, one, I'm seeing a lot of hearts, so that's telling me that you guys are getting it. Um, the oranges and the browns can really start to, you know, cancel a lot of things on the deeper skin and the yellows and the salmons a lot of things on the lighter skin and but don't be afraid to start working with those other oh, I'm glad you like the speedometer thing um, don't be afraid to start working and playing with those other colors because as you look at the color wheel guys listen do you know how impressed your clients will be if you have a color wheel sitting on your makeup table and you aren't afraid to reference it if you are looking at the discolorations in somebody looking at the color wheel and then they see you suddenly take a little bit of red straight red or whatever it may be put it in something and then all of a sudden their skin looks like a million bucks they are going to think that you guys are the biggest geniuses ever and can i be honest with you you are you are the biggest geniuses ever because look guys did i tell you at the beginning that this was much simpler than people thought it is so much simpler, but so many people make terrible mistakes and make it much more complicated than it needs to be. It's about light handedness. All right. So, um, let's, let's, let's talk a little bit more. Um, here, let me see where I was. I got to look because remember I get a little bit off, um, a little bit off topic. Okay. So I was talking about bronze and ebony shades, a goldeny orange or a straight orange is ideal for that. Um, and again, like I said, the more intense the discoloration, the more intense the undertone of the, cor of, of the corrector. Um, with the corrector color within the concealer needs to be so that 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 tip is where I'm starting to say if you want to start making your own How does one make salmon concealer? Well, you take normal concealer 
and then you add your um, your yellows and reds to it till it becomes a little bit more salmony, right? Because it needs orange, right? So you add your yellows and reds, and voila, you've made a salmony color corrector. If you're noticing that you have an extraordinary color correcting concealer, if you're noticing that, like if you wanna start making it for yourself, or if, if you work with a client regularly and that client has a lot of red in their skin, well, what you can do is you can start to make, you can start to, you find the concealer that's perfect for them, you take the, and then what you'll do is you'll take a little bit of the green and you'll mix the green in it until it gets where it needs to be. And then you might say, ooh, it's looking, now it's looking a little weird and ashy. All right, well, how can I warm it up? Yellow. I'll put in a little more yellow. What makes green? Yellow and blue. So putting in a little more blue is just gonna take your color and make it a little warmer. Putting in a little blue makes it a little cooler. See how these all start to work hand in hand? It's crazy, right? It's just crazy. And it, the other thing too, guys, it's crazy easy. It's just crazy easy. Okay, so um, now I already told you guys, um, when do you conceal, when do you color correct? You know, um, and do you color correct before or after concealer and what it depends on, right? Um, do, you cons do you color correct or do you foundation first? Color correct or conceal or foundation first, right? Um, you, if it's a really super, um, super, super, super um, major thing, you're gonna color correct and conceal before the foundation. If it's a super minor thing and you aren't sure if the foundation alone will do it, you color correct and conceal after, right? tiny 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 little things and the reason you can do that is because you're not going to do what people do and just take color correct and put it everywhere you're only going to do the exact spots you need to do it in right so um that's my my little tip all right big mistakes that people make big 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 mistakes that people make um if you color correct or conceal remember i said um the color you use all depends on the gradient of the person's skin and it's the big note we have at the bottom here the color correct shade you use depends on the gradient uh, the, the the richness um or lightness of the, the shade in the perfect person's skin how much the intensity is will depend on you know okay let's say that the deepest person the deepest skin on earth is a hundred all right the lightest skin on earth is a zero so if you're looking at someone like me the intensity probably needs to be about here if you're looking at somebody who has super, super, super dark skin, the intensity might have to be there, right? So um, what are the mistakes that people often make? They will use product that's too light on somebody. So let's say they take my shade and they use it on someone who's super deep. That ends up making the area look weird and glowy, ghostly, ashy, attracting attention for a different and equally bad reason. So making sure it's equivalent to per a person's undertone and tone is extremely important and that happens the more you begin to develop and train your eye right um, how can we test coverage you can test coverage um, okay wait I've got something um, here from uh, from Emma Grace um, sent to me by QC so I'll address it now um, can you say that again about the order of concealing and um, corrector and foundation okay um, for those of you guys that missed it here it is when do I conceal? When do I correct? When do I use foundation? Right? Okay. So, are, am I? Let's start from the beginning of the things I said earlier. Am I going to use concealer or a color corrector? You're going to use concealer if it's a super light thing, and it's not going to show through foundation or concealer. Yeah, you just do a tiny bit of concealer and you cover it. If it's a deep thing that it's, it would put a cast, a cast of a different shade through your foundation or your concealer. You're going to color correct right or if putting your concealer on over it's gonna make a weird color you're gonna color correct first right now do I use foundation or do I conceal color correct first if it's a super light thing if it's a super 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 light thing right um, you are going to use the foundation first because the foundation is gonna neutralize an extraordinary amount of it and then you're gonna need the tiniest bit of something to hide it your concealer your color correct right but if it's let's say it's a super dark circle so if it's a super dark circle, you are going to color correct and conceal first because then when you put your foundation over, everything will even out. Because if you wait, you really could do either, but truthfully, it's just easier because then if, you, uh, if there was a little of your color corrector that was still showing, when you put your foundation on, it's gonna neutralize it and make it look more like skin. So that's part of the reason why. Truth be told, you can do it any way that works best for you, but you're kind of guaranteeing yourself an extra safety net if it's a super dark thing, if you do the foundation after it. Because then, let's say there was a little too much salmon there, when you put your foundation over, the color's gonna neutralize and even out a little bit more. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, so um, that being said, trick, big trick, right? I said that the mistake a lot of people make is swatching color. The biggest trick, the best advice I can offer you is thin, sheer layers. Don't be afraid to do two, three, 
four layers. The extremely thin, the extremely sheer, the extremely light. All right, that's what's gonna make it look most real. Even if you have to go in and do it three completely sheer times, suddenly you're gonna stand back from me and we go, oh my God, the eyes look perfect. Um, they look perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, so let me see. I think we're getting um, we're getting close to the demo. So guys, you're gonna have to bear with me because I've never done something like this before. I'm not gonna be in front of a mirror. You see all my redness? I'm not gonna be in front of a mirror. Um, I'm going to be trying to do it reverse through the camera. All right, so that's a little different for me. It's pretty much like a mirror, but it's still, but also it's like this big, whereas my mirror is this big. So it's a learning curve as we do this together. Okay, guys. So um, let's talk about um, my live demonstration. I'm going to show you guys in um, in two um, two perspectives. I'm going to show you first of all what I'm taking out and why, because I'm not going to be able to hold this up. If you guys have the QC palette, or if you have anything, it doesn't matter. These are pretty much common colors. I love the QC ones. I use them on set all the time. This is the one I keep neat for demos. The one in my kit is a mess. Um, not Well, just because they're so scraped into it. It's not, not a mess because it's painted everywhere. They're just used. Um, I'm going to use this salmon. So when you see me using the salmon, it's this one. And I'm going to use this mint green right here. Both very common shades. All right. This is a yellowy shade, a more yellowy shade right here. And I'm going to show you also how the power of yellow can work, right? So I can show you. But I think you'll see what I mean about salmon. And then I'm going to show you with my favorite um, Eve Pearl product. Um, and I'm going to show you um, with some concealers by 3 Custom Color. This is something that I recommend everybody have. It's the Professional Palette Ready to Wear Cream um, Concealer and Foundation Palette. It is amazing. It's got these shades in it. You need the tiniest bit to do the most wonderful things. And it works so well on its own or in conjunction. But we're gonna talk about some some favorite products, right, um, as we go in. So the reason I held that up and showed you is because from here on in, I'm gonna be using the palette. So I'm using my QC palette, my QC palette knife. I'm taking out right now the tiniest bit. Look at how little I'm taking out. You need almost nothing. I'm taking out the tiniest bit of the salmon and I'm taking out the tiniest bit of the green. All right, because I'm gonna work um, one after the other, one area after the other, and we're gonna talk all about it as we go. Okay, so um, now you see I have I have a, a light, medium light skin, right? Um, you're asking what that palette is. Don't worry, guys. If you forget um, if you forget any of this, there'll be notes about it. Um, you know, um, pasted below. This is by Three Custom. There, there. Does that help? There we go. Three Custom Color Specialists um, Professional um, Palette. RCMA is great product. It's a great product. Okay, so um, let's get to the nitty gritty. I'm gonna take a little off. My hands are completely sanitized. I work from the back of my hand because it warms my product up and then the product is warm, it goes on the skin warm, it blends like a dream. When you're working around the eyes, one of the best things you can do, and I've got one right here. This is my own eye cream, I'm taking it out. I don't even put my fingers in my eye cream. Can you see it's a, a palette swipes, palette knife swipes? Because um, you don't want to Um, contaminate it and shorten its life. So now I've taken it out, put it on the back of my hand. The first thing you want to do is make sure you get some eye cream below the eye. And you don't have to do it right away. You don't, you don't, you don't have to do it the second you're working. You can do it at the beginning of the application. There are way less glands below the eye. So the skin tends to be drier. It can way, 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 way easier get crepey and dehydrated. And you're going to notice how much easier and smoother the product goes on. So now if you put the product on and you um, and it feels really greasy and waxy, well, give it a minute to soak in and then don't be afraid to take a little tissue and dab some away. You can see the way my eye completely absorbed it. Now, how do you see exactly the areas that you need to cover with the eyes? Eyes can be very tricky, which is why people will often paint underneath the entire eye, right? How do you see what needs to be covered? Tilt the head forward. When you tilt the head forward, the dark circles themselves leap right out. You see it? They're usually kidney bean shaped on people. When you hide that dark circle, everything disappears, right? Everything opens up today. So you can see right away, everybody usually has a little dark circle here, dark circle here, dark circle in there. People's dark circles here vary. Some people's do go all the way across the eye. Most people's don't. So just be a little careful with that. So now I'm picking up a little bit of my salmon shade. Remember what I said about being extremely, extremely thin? You wanna go right along the line of demarcation. Do you see it's actually a hard line? It's a hard line where it ends because that's the socket and hollow of my eye. So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna carve it right along that line. Okay. Now I'm not gonna. I'm only doing it like this to show you how hard of a um, 
how hard of a line it is. But now watch, what I'm gonna do is I'm going right in there and I'm just, there's a lot on my brush right now, so I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna just use what was there and I'm gonna take what was there and I'm gonna pull that into the rest of the area. You see how it's starting to turn white? That's because there's too much product. Remember I talked about, so now I'm gonna tap a lot of it out. I talked about um, with too much product. In the videos I call it the reverse raccoon. Why do I call it that? You see the difference in those under his eyes already? Um, I call it the re reverse raccoon because raccoons have dark circles around their eyes, right? So if you give yourself a white circle around your eye, well, it's the reverse. You see the way this eye instantly lifted? Like it lifted almost to a crazy degree. There's a little bit much product there. I'm tapping a little bit off. You see the difference, right? Startling difference. And I've used almost no product. You take it here. I'm going to go in right there. Now you're going to see it's playing with the light, right? It's playing with the light, but what it's going to do, especially when the rest of the product goes over it, everything is just going to disappear. Now, see how I didn't neutralize that quite the way I needed to? So I'm going in right there and I'm tapping on it. The product I'm using right now is the um is the salmon concealer that is in the um th that is in the QC kit. So you see the difference, guys? tiny bits of product. Most people would cake it everywhere. This is why product really actually lasts so long in the pro world. Now, some professionals, I'm going to lean way in to show you guys this. So when I lean way in, there's going to be a light way above me. So it's going to make the dark circle look really dark, but it's because there's a light right above me. Um, I'm leaning way in to show you this. Do you see the natural darkness below the um, waterline of the eye? Most people have a natural darkness there. Some people say don't cover it. And the reason people say don't cover it is because it actually works as a drop shadow and it makes the eye look bigger. Now I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna cover it. I'm gonna neutralize it here, okay? So I'm gonna go in right here. You see it, right? Now watch this. I'm gonna go in right there, right along my lash line. Oop. And I'm gonna neutralize it. So there we go. See how it made, see how, now you see how much smaller this eye looks than that one? Because this little bit of natural darkness down there makes the eye look bigger. So that'll start to give you a choice. You can start to say, oh wow, you see how much smaller my eye looks, right? It's almost startling. That's simply because I covered that. So this is the real size of my eye. This is illusion. That's illusion. I have a smaller eye than you would think, right? Um, illusion makes this one seem bigger because you see it's that darkness right there. You see that purpley darkness? makes it all um, vanish. So now, the second shade I'm about to use is that mint green. Remember, I took out two shades. I took out the salmon, I took out the mint green. Oh wow, you can see the art on my wall. Wait, do you see it? Oh, there's my guitar. And wait, there's my art. You can see my whole apartment through my palette. Okay, so I'm taking a little bit of the green. I'm putting it right here. Watch this, guys. Take the majority of it off, because if you don't, watch what's gonna happen, all right? Just to, mis just to show you, it, tur it, it literally turns ashy. See how it turned white? That's ashy. That's what I mean by the ashiness I'm talking about. So I'm rubbing most of that out. Um, now I'm taking most of this off and watch this. See how I'm tapping it only where it needs to be? I'm tapping it into the red. And do you see how it's starting to turn the red into a skin tone? Okay, let me get a little more. Take most of it out. Some people like to do color corrects with their fingers because you really can stipple it. You know, I had a, um, a student say to me, and I'll, and I'll remind this to you guys because it's, it's good knowledge. Someone said to me that some people they worked with said you can never, never, never put your skin on your, your fingers on your client's skin. Well, that's completely untrue because if you clean your, your fingers, they're completely um, hygienic, right? So you definitely can put your, so now why am I going in all these areas? Because I told you guys, right? I have a wash of red that goes, you can see it, goes all the way up and over. So notice I'm using more here. And like, now look at this side of the face versus this one. Do you see how you're already starting to see my contour because I canceled out my red? Isn't that pretty amazing? Now watch this. So I'm gonna take um, my, my the, the, I, I use something called the Skin Perfect Primer by Dermalogica on myself. I'm obsessed with it for myself because it's, um, it's both a primer and it's got light coverage in one. So watch this. So watch this. So I'm going to put this on, on my forehead. If I wanted a little more up there, I could, you know, but we're just gonna concentrate now in this sort of single look. Watch. So I'm gonna tap a little bit of this in here. Why am I not rubbing? Because if I were rubbing after I set something on there, it would start to 
rub it away, right? So I'm stippling it in so it lays on top of, but doesn't. I love Dermalogica too, Loretta. It's where I got my esthetician's um, training. Um, there. You seeing the difference between one side of the face and the other? Does this side of my face not look dramatic? Look at, just look at that. You can, I haven't put any color in my cheek. Let me put a little color in now. I'm taking um, a blush that I love by three custom color specialists and it's a cream blush and I'm just gonna tap it into the apple and up the rounded part of the cheekbone, leaving the highest part available. Look at this side versus that side. See, now are you guys starting to see the me you recognize, those of you that are used to me? It's pretty startling, isn't it? Um, then when I set it with setting powder, I'm just gonna do it with a baby brush um, today. When I set everything with setting powder, you're gonna see little the little bits of shine that were in there. See the little bit of shine that was below my eye? Now it's gone. You know, I'm putting the setting powder in these areas. It's gone. Boom, 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 boom. Look at one side of my face versus the other. Pretty cool, right? Color correcting is a light-handed business. It's a super, super, super light-handed business. You're asking, should you color correct before primer? Depends on what you're going to do. I was using my primer also as my foundation, so I did. Um, I, if, I, if you're not using your, prime, your primer as your foundation, because I'm using a two-in-one. I'm using a primer um, that is a, a primer tinted moisturizer in one. So I'm using it after, right? But, that, but I'd also moisturized and prepped my face. Um, concealer has a much thicker, concealers and primers have a much thicker formulation than most foundations. So what ends up happening is they will grab the skin more and they won't vanish and get sucked in the same way um, you know, tinted moisturizers and the like, um, will or may. So now that being said, I'm going to take my other one that I love, um, my Eve Pearl salmon, and I'm going to show you guys how that salmon so effortlessly, um, and guys, forgive me, this webinar is going to be a little bit longer than an hour, but I hope that's okay with you. I think it's pretty rich information and it's, it, we're cramming a lot in, right? And it was just going to be color correct, but conceal and color correct go hand in hand. So it's important to practice them because on this side of my face, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to use my salmon and you're going to see, watch how much easier it is for the salmon to do its job. Now, I, again, I used a little too much, but I can tap that out. I'm going to go right here. I'm going to go under there. All right. And tap it out. See why I love salmon, guys? Are you seeing what that's doing? See how salmon instantly cancels everything? That's why it's my go-to color. Yours may be yellow. Look at the look at the drop. See, same effect. I was just able to do it far faster with the salmon, right? All right up there below my lash line. There, see my, my two little eyes now? Both my eyes became little. Now, let me um, take a little bit of concealer because you see my red's not too intense. My red's not too intense. So let me take my, um, my palette. Let me take a little bit of a concealer. Let's see if I like that shade. And then I'm gonna take the tiniest bit. I'm just gonna Work it into the areas that need it. So you're gonna see the red still peeking through, right? So you're, this is just the test to show you when do I need to conceal, when do I need to color correct? See, the concealer isn't fully able to do it on its own, right there. Guess where it can do it? Lighter areas. You see how it's taken care of right here just fine? But there, it's a little too intense. So I tried the concealer, I saw it, now my nose will be fine with concealer, right? So there's a little concealer on my nose. Let's just buff it in. The red on my nose is canceled from concealer. See, when to use concealer, when to use color correct. Now I've seen that it's not quite enough. I need to go back and take a little more of my green. I'm gonna take a little more of my, because if I don't fix in here, what's gonna happen? Those makeup brushes behind me, the reason they're there, guys, those are the QC brushes. That's the QC brush kit. So I'm glad you're noticing them. They're pretty amazing. So I'm neutralizing that now with a little bit of the green. And you're gonna see, I'm not gonna take everything away because I, you're asking was the, um, does the salmon work on olive skin? The answer to that is yes, but not in its lightest form. You have to add a little bit more depth to it. It's gotta be a little bit deeper. You have to make sure that you're using colors that are appropriate to each person's natural depth of tone, right? 
So uh, that being said, I then take a little bit more of my hammer. I'm gonna tap it in. Tap it in, tap it in, tap it in, tap it in, tap it in. Ah, it's a little it's a little hot in my apartment, so I'm not gonna worry so much about my forehead because I'm sweating a little bit right now. Um boom 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 boom. My red's still peeking through a little bit there, so I'm going to take a tiny bit more green. Just to soften it the tiniest bit. See, only where I need to go. See, working like an artist works. See how everything's neutralizing? Now, let me take a little bit of my blush, warm up my cheek. See, I'm doing downward strokes. Why am I doing downward strokes? The skin is like scales. They go downward. So when you brush up, you ruffle the skin. When you go down, you go in the direction of the skin and you keep it smooth and soft. So now I go right below the eyes, my inner corner. See, I'll sweep right here. There, do what I mean? Pretty easy, right? So um, let me see, let me see if I have any other um, notes for you. So, um, oh, 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 guys, guys, you, I, you gotta forgive me. I got so excited, I stopped going over that color chart. Let's keep going on those colors and uh, what's so great, right? So um, we talked about warm brown, when warm brown's gonna work. What is lilac gonna do? It's gonna correct sallowness in skin, yellowness, when people have a yellowness to their skin. Pink, freckles and sunspots on very light skin. So um, there's a lot of things, you know, ba sort of basic things that these um, pr products are gonna be able to do, right? And that's gonna be the sort of colors that we look at. Now, hang on. Here. Sorry guys, she had to go pee pee again. Um, my dog, my baby. Um, so the products that I love most, I recommend everybody have this three custom color specialist palette. I love it, it's not overly expensive. I love the Eve Pearl, she has a set of four and between those fours, they have the shit. You're seeing the difference in my face now, right? This is how you guys usually see me at the webinars. That's, you just it pretty much saw my entire men, male makeup routine. That's what I do on most of my male celebrities as well. Um, the Eve Pearl, um, have I'm shining because it's like 90 degrees in here and I forgot to turn on the air. Um, they have four different shades. They have light, um, medium, deep, um, medium, deep, and deep, right? Or, me or, or deep and dark. They have four shades. And I also recommend that um, everybody have the QC palette, which you all get if you're a student, right? And if you're not a student, you should be. Learn, learn, learn correctly. This is a taste of the kind of stuff that you're going to learn. All right. So, um... Now, one other thing, one little, two little special notes, one little special note, two little special notes. Um, a concealer and color correct can sometimes be way too thick for the skin, all right? Too, too rich, too dark. So what do you do? You can mix them with a little bit of your eye cream or a little bit of your moisturizer, okay? And that's one thing that'll just make everything even smooth out and look absolutely perfect, okay? So if it's too thick, don't be afraid to use eye cream or moisturizer to thin it out. And um, remember, color correct and concealer, even though this is the topic, are not always necessary. Use them when you need them because that's what's going to make it most impactful and make everything look most natural, right? So those are the things, that, like those are a couple of my um, couple of my little tips for you guys. You don't always need them. Use them when they're needed. Sometimes foundation will do the job. It's about, it's about decide, using your intelligence not to overdo but to do what's needed sometimes what we want to do is we we have a natural tendency to learn an advanced skill and want to show it off remember it's not always needed knowing when to not use something is just as important as knowing when to use it all right my loves so um all right i'm gonna i'm gonna switch over and see what questions are getting sent um sent through to me um by karina and then I'm going to give you guys my official goodbye and my thank you. Please remember, this is always available to you guys. And the Facebook gods smiled upon us. They didn't boot me off today. Um, oh, guys, I was going to tell you something else. How can you test your conceals and color corrects? On the back of the arm. On the veins on the back of the arm. That's a great way to practice. And that's a great way to also start to really learn undertones and color, right? And also, those of you who didn't take that shading exercise from Master Makeup Artistry Unit B serious enough, do it again. It's super important, right? All right, so let me see what my questions are and how I can help you guys. Emma Grace, 
Um, I, I already answered Emma Grace's question and I said it again about the concealer, the foundation, and the color correct. Zo, um, Zo Dean. So if people have quite a substantial amount of red on their face, do you still need the, to essentially cover their whole affected face in the different shades of green? Um, if green is, if there, some people are who are cool toned have natural red all over their body. If everything about them is red, straight down their neck and everything, then use the foundation and just even and soften it, right? If there's areas that are particularly harsh, lighten them, but look at the rest of their body to make the decision. See, see how I've got some red everywhere? But do you see how it was much more intense in the mask in my face? Notice that I softened it. That allowed me to put blush on, which gave me a soft, real glow, but looked like my features. Because if you neutralize somebody's face and then the rest of their body's red, it's not going to look right. It's not going to look natural or normal. So you've got to start to look. you got to take in the whole picture to figure out how to do the, the shining star, right? The star on top of the tree, right? Um, but yes, then the answer is, if you suddenly find the red is just all over their face, what you might actually need to do and what might be the best thing for you is to, to use a, um, to make a color correcting concealer. Remember I talked about finding the concealer shade that's right for them, adding the shades of green to it so that it neutralizes the red? That might be the best thing for you to do if somebody has enormous amounts of red, right? So that might be one of the things that you want to do. Um, all right, let's see. Catherine Snow, sometimes you notice that the skin looks super dry after you put on the green. What can you do for that? That's an excellent question, and that's what I was starting to address a second ago. Color correctors are so thick. They're almost like, have you guys ever used that paste to fill a hole in a wall, that like spackle? They're almost like that spackle. So they can make the area look dry. They can make it look pasty. Don't be afraid to, A, mix it with your emollient, emollient really, um, hydrating smooth maybe oil based um you know um eye cream or moisturizer or also don't be afraid don't be afraid to um make sure that you really prime or put hydrators down first um but 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 that might be um of particular help but usually it's mixing a little um of a hydrating moisturizer into the product will really uh save the day for you all right let's see here um Margo, does concealing work the same for all ages or does the age change how you conceal? No, no, it works for all ages, but here's the thing. If you do makeup correctly from moment one, you're never gonna have to worry about when people become mature because makeup done appropriately is always light-handed. Does anybody wanna look like foundation is caked on them? No, nobody does, right? Young or old, they just wanna look naturally perfect. Now, you're seeing how you can be extremely light-handed and make someone look... Because you can see how naturally perfect this entire part of my face looks. Look where I didn't put any attention. You see the slight irregularities. But you saw how little I needed to do this. And I don't look caked or overly made up. That's the secret. When you learn to be light-handed, light-handed works on everybody. And it will. you can make somebody who's 80 look just as naturally perfect. No, their skin will appear to have a different texture. But it will have a different it will look like it's naturally perfect for their age. Does that make sense? No, you're not gonna suddenly give an 80 year old skin that looks as supple and tight as a 20 year old, but you will make it look completely pristine for their age, which is a really important thing, right? Um, all right, let me see. Um, Chris, um, tan with freckles, what is best? Um, for your tan with freckles, um, when you're kind of going, you're trying to neutral. Well, the reality is, do you want, do you want to get rid of the freckles? I'm a huge fan of freckles. I say don't get rid of them. My advice to people is to slightly neutralize them, to start to, um, to start to bring them down a little bit with the lighter shade of foundation, because then you really get to honor the person's um, natural tonalities, their natural um, imbalances. But if somebody's tan with brown. You might want to, salmon will work really well. Sam, salmon will work really well because it'll start to neutralize the browns, but it's, you want it to be a, little, a hair lighter. Um, and you might also really enjoy what orange is capable of doing. But when someone's lighter, pink is very useful, which is why if you go to a pinky salmon shade, because salmon can be more orange, salmon can be more pink. If you go to a pinky salmon shade, that might work really well on, on the tan skin with the spots, right? Um, Alba. Um, what's uh, what about the grayish undertones um, if you really look at it 
Grey... I've never actually seen Grey undertones on anybody. Like, anybody. If you stand back for a second and look at it, you're going to probably notice it's blue. You're probably going to see that it's blue or it's very light purple. Um, but people don't naturally turn gray unless they're dying, right? Unless they're extremely ill, if something like that's going on. If you really look at it, you're probably gonna find it's like icy blues and icy grays and you know other things, but the icy blues and icy purples. But purple could easily be mistaken for gray, right? So if it's those colors, you know that you're gonna need the, if it's straight up purple, then you want sort of that lighter yellow to counter it, but it can be uh, salmon with more yellow in it. It could be the straight salmon, and if you see the salmon alone isn't doing it, try a little yellow. But I, I, I've never, I hear people say that a lot, especially when it comes to like, you know, aging um, things, and people go, I'm going to give her a gray undertone. I've never seen anybody with a gray undertone. People are warm, they're cool, or they're neutral, um, but they're never gray. I've never seen gray right so that that from my own experience I can't really answer answer because I think if you really look at it you're gonna find it's probably realistically purple or blue um, all right when we go in the next section Sharon asks should you color correct before prime depends on what you're oh I already answered this for you my love it depends on what you're doing I use my primer like it's foundation so I do it second um, but you see I also set it like foundation um, I don't put product over it so but I actually could have done what I did either way um, Normally, I put my, my primer on first, but the reason I couldn't today, guys, is because if I had done it today, um, you wouldn't have seen the full effects of what Color Correct does. So I did it, but this is just to show with something sheer like that, doesn't really matter. But if you're using primer for primer, do it first. All right, um, Stevie, um, what about peachy concealer as a base, then uh, concealer closer to your color? Is that too risky? Well, peachy concealer is salmon. Salmon is pinky peach, right? So um, a, a, a peachy um, concealer as a base, then a concealer closer to your color. That's literally color correct and um, conceal. You're just doing both steps. I don't think, you rarely have to do both steps. Like if someone has an age spot so dark that you finish and you still see a little of it after you've color corrected and foundationed, then you need to conceal. But I've rarely seen people who have to do both if you do them correctly. So it's a balancing act. You, if you neutralize them with the right shade, you don't have to, notice I color corrected below my eyes, I didn't do anything else. One over here is done with one salmon. One over here is done with, um, you know, one shade, one's done with another. Two completely different salmon products, exact same result, right? Um, one salmon was a little pinker, one was a little yellower, exact same result. See why some people love yellow, some love salmon, like me. So um, yeah, that would, be, that would be my advice. Um, Emma Grace, how would you add depth to a color corrector? Browns, how do you lighten the color corrector? Um, the way that I add depth to a color corrector is uh, lots of people have different feelings about it. Depending on the person's tone, you can go with, you can use browns. If like, if it's somebody who's, if it's for someone in the orange category, but you know the orange is gonna start to turn them ashy, add some rich brown to it. Take it to a, a, a deep, goldy, orangey brown, right? Um, if you think it's, which is what warm brown is, right? But if the warm brown's too deep and the orange is too light, you can mix the two and find the middle spot. Um, if you want to add depth and you're, you have a lighter skin tone, one of the quickest and easiest ways to do it is with, um, with, with, con with concealer that's either the person's shade or one shade deeper than the person because it's already in their undertone. It's exactly where it needs to be. And if you find that then it went a little in the wrong color, well, it went a little too like cool for example then add a little bit of a, something that has a bit more yellow to it and neutralize it but you can if you when you add your depth sometimes you have to balance it a little bit more with the corrective color make sense so um to, to just explain for me if i was using a salmon that was way too light for me what i would do is i would take a concealer that was my shade mix a very little of it mix the salmon into it, and then I would see if it still sat where I needed it to. If it didn't and suddenly looked like it was too cool, I'd take a tiny bit of yellow, put the yellow in it, because the yellow would bring out the other colors that I need, and voila, I get the perfect shade, right? So don't don't be afraid to, um, what's the white in the QC palette you really used for? I don't, you, I never, you, a lot of artists use white to lighten and deepen colors. I find unless somebody's um, medium and fair below, it doesn't always work. It can make people ashy. I, I myself don't use it, but an extraordinary number of artists use the white to lighten, and they use the darkest brown to deepen. I, I, I try to use a very light color in the undertone instead, 
because I find it's easier to do and it's less chance of like skewing it in a direction that can make people look a little ashy. Um, uh, how do I lighten the color? You like I just said, you can you can use um you can use white if you want. I don't. I choose a color. I choose a much lighter shade that's within their undertone family. So I'll choose a, for myself. I would choose a much lighter cool shade to um to bring it down. Okay, um, Reswana, um, do you have any further suggestions for oily skin during color correcting? Um, here's the thing. The best thing that anybody can do, and please trust me on this, take the QC skincare course. If you don't understand skin, you cannot be a great makeup artist. You just can't. And you're, you're guessing at longevity, final finish, because you don't understand skin types, exactly how to address them. It's one of the best things you can do. Because this means addressing things from an ingredient perspective. So what does it mean? You have to know exactly what ingredients to use in your moisturizer and in your primer so that when you start to color correct and then set with your foundation, all of these ingredients are working together to quell the oil production and normalize the skin. It's, it's makeup genius at its finest. It can only happen if you really understand skin and that's why we created that course so you can be a true master artist. So what are some things that you can do? Try Cover FX's Mattifying Primer. It's amazing, it's got willow bark in it, which evens out and um, quells the oil production. It's got natural oil absorbers, it's pretty great. Use something like that, and then make sure you're using an oil absorbing foundation and setting it with um, a powder that deals with that foundation, that deals with oiliness, or is just a straight up like silica or mica that will just set it. Because if you have oily skin and you use talc, your face is gonna get darker, which most people don't want because it looks like a, a makeup mask. Um, Rebecca, how do you color correct or conceal or foundation when someone has overly tanned in a tanning bed um, and their face is super dark, but um, their neck or chest is not as dark? Um, here's the thing. I have, I've had clients like that before. What do, what do I do? If their face and body don't match and it's the face that's darker, you kind of got to give them that darker face. Like that's not color correcting. The person has tanned themselves. There's nothing you can do. What is a tan? People are going to hate when I tell you this. Tan is visible sun damage. You are actually showing that you are damaging your skin. That's what a tan is. I will never understand why people see it as a mark of beauty. It is literally, literally damaged skin, right? So um, and you, you can't really color correct. Um, when someone's just evenly damaged their skin, I mean, what you'd be essentially trying to do is completely erase their tan, which they're not gonna want, right? So what's one of the greatest things that you probably can do that will make them look amazing? Highlight the center of the face, take a foundation that is a shade or two lighter than their tone, get the mask of the face, so that the natural tan becomes a contour on the outer edge of their face and you, the mask will pull forward and it won't look even a little unnatural as long as you make sure to match it in their skin tone. But that's what I would do because then it will match it, it'll balance it with their body and it'll make their face a focal point. So that's what I would do. But that's a little bit different than um, color correcting. It's a little bit different than color correcting. Constance, um, when the colors are blended, can you um, store the blended um, blend for a client? Um, if so long, how will it keep? It'll keep as long as your concealers and your products would always keep. So it'll keep, it, it could, if, your, if your concealers are at the beginning of their shelf life, that could be two years, it can last a long time, right? Um, if it's, if it's um, you know, um, you've had your product for a year, going on a year, then maybe six months, the client, you'll be able to keep it for the client. But if it's fresh new product, you keep it for quite a long time. Um, all right, um, when you have an African American with skin dust discoloration, in the case of vitiligo, what can you do? I'm so glad you asked me that because that was a, that was something that I meant to address. With vitiligo, what you have to do is you have to restore their pigmentation. I think I actually might have made um, some notes about this. Let, let me go back and see. Um, yeah. Oh wow, guys, there's, there's two other things I didn't mention. Let me mention it now, I got excited. If you're trying to hi hide melasmas, melasmas are um, darkening from um, hormonal changes and hyperpigmentation, which are age spots, it's yellow undertones or oranges and browns, okay? That's what will cover your melasmas. Vitiligo. Vitiligo means the skin is missing melanin. They are white patches. So you can't put the person's foundation right over it or what you're gonna end up doing is you're going to have ashy gray spots, right? Now, why does it look gray? Because there's white underneath brown. So that's why, um, that's why um, 
they they look that way right so how are we gonna deal with that here's where it gets fun right use a concealer two shades darker than the client's skin now this is step one when you put the sh and you only use it let's say I have a, a an uneven sort of circle of vitiligo here you know uh, something like that you know um, shape literally put the paint the two shade deeper in there because it's going to add the melanin to the super light shade and then what's going to happen is when you put your foundation over it it's going to neutralize the white skin and the whole area is going to look like skin it's kind of amazing you got to try it for yourself it's pretty spectacular all right so that's my tip for you on that um zoe uh zoe again um if you uh, if I'm struggling to find the right um, color corrector, are you able to use colors uh, colored eyeshadows to neutralize? You've tried this before on yourself and found it works, but would like an opinion. I would never do that, and the reason I would never do it is because some people do, and you can do anything. There's no rights or wrongs in makeup, right? But the reason that I would never do it is because if you put those kind of powders, you can never put any product over it again because it'll grab and it'll start to look cakey and weird. So yes, some people do stuff like that, particularly under the eyes, where if they realize they've made the under eye too light, they put a little bit of a bronzer under there. If it's a final step, yes. But if it's any step that you have to add anything else to, I would say no, because powders will grab any other creams that you put on and it can look extremely patchy. This, the thing about this that I have to tell you is practice, practice, practice. The thing you have to do is practice. Um, what's gonna make all the difference in the world is um, you know Ebony uh, Send me your question again because I'm looking through the ones that I was sent here and I do not have a question for you So um, if your question is on topic Which is color correcting or concealing send it again um, below and I'll answer it right away If it's not about color correcting concealing save it for one of our future webinars But um, as I say my goodbye, I'm gonna look for you to I'm gonna look for you to type it in right there um Yep, yep, QC's asking for your question again right now as well. Um, so guys, I'm gonna start my wind down. Thank you for taking um, the time to spend this hour and a half with me. It was a mega huge topic. There was an extra, I know we've, we've lost about 50% of our viewers right now, but that's okay because I wanna thank each and every one of you, tell you that I love you, and say um, the power of makeup is extraordinary. You shouldn't be putting makeup on people to turn them into someone they are not. You should be putting makeup on people to make them shine their own personal brightest, right? That's the power of makeup. And when you, when you approach it from that perspective and realize little tiny swatches can change everything and make people look more, you're gonna realize you need way, way less concealer, way less foundation, way less of tons of products. So don't be afraid to practice light handedness and learning color correcting is going to be a huge step on that journey so just to recap one more time if no one's told you guys yet today let me be the first and this will be easy for you guys in australia because your day's just beginning let me be the first to say i love you guys i love every one of you let's unite in our love of beauty right and let's also just remember the gift you can give to people with confidence and self-esteem through your hands is why you are a part of a multi-billion dollar industry. It is why there is gonna be so much, you are gonna be able to change people's lives. And very importantly, guys, we're not doing this, you know, for no other, for, for, we're also doing it for our own lives. The greatest, greatest, greatest thing that you're gonna do, you can also completely change your own financial life. So it's an amazing opportunity. You can make an extraordinary amount of money, you can change people's lives, and people will always pay you to teach them confidence and self-esteem something they can walk away with um okay wait i'm seeing something here um Brittany, nathan do you recommend um cheaper brand concealing palettes such as b h cosmetics or coastal sense ah if you want them i i'm, I'm not i think there are places to go cheap and places not to go cheap if you want to go cheap go, get cheap lipstick get cheap lip liner go with cheap, cheap eyeliner can work um i get expensive primer expensive foundations um i get expensive concealers and decent color corrects but just remember the cheaper they are the more they can 
glom and stick, right? So try them, but it all depends on people's um, individual taste. And Ebony, my dearest darling, your mother is dark skinned and you call her eyes Ricky the Raccoon. You normally use a concealer under her eyes, but she's cool all over. I wonder if I should color correct instead. Well, if she's got that super darkness below her eyes and she's super dark skinned, remember I talked about when people are super dark skinned, sometimes the really warm orange, a really warm brown, a really warm brown has orange in it. So that's gonna, that is conceal and color correct in one. I would use the really warm brown. And if you're like, what's a really warm brown? Depending on how deep she is. And if this is too deep, bring it down a little bit with a slightly um, lighter warm concealer. That, right there, warm brown. But if that's too deep, bring it down. Bring it down with something that has a yellow undertone to it, right? Um, or a concealer that's a, that, that's a little lighter than her, her skin shade. And I think that you'll see there's, um, there's great power to that. All right. Um, I guess that's the skinny. I thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, have an amazing day. Never be afraid to leave your comments below. For those of you that aren't aware, and this is the first one, please know I give um, continuing ed every single month, once a month, free continuing ed here. Learn, learn correctly. What palette did I just hold up? That's the QC concealer palette. You get that for free. The, and the QC product, guys, I'm gonna tell you, it's amazing. It's amazing. I have used it on an extraordinary number of celebrities. It wouldn't be in your kit if it wasn't good. Some people say, oh, QC's, you know, I'm gonna go to the school that gives you NARS. Well, okay, go to the school that gives you NARS but gives you crappy education. Come to QC where me and the team have specifically created amazing products just for you that are true professional ready products and really learn, right? Um, it's been my honor, it's my joy. I could go on and on and on and on for days, but um, I think the best thing now is for you guys to play an experiment. So remember, this is a lot of information here. Don't be afraid to watch the video a second time, but the way you're gonna learn it best, and trust me on this, is to experiment and to practice. You are gonna find what works best for you. Everything is different for every single person involved, all right? So um, if you're not signed up for QC's mailing list, guys, do me the favor and write your email address below. QC will add you to their um, mailing list, which means you'll get, um, you'll get a once a month uh, message from me. Usually I'm teaching you something in there or encouraging you something, and you'll get all kinds of special messages um, from QC with makeup knowledge and information as well. So if, if that's not something you're signed up for, sign up below. If you're on social media, I'm at Nathan Walnut, single word. If you tag me on things, I only sign on like once a month, okay guys? But if you tag me on things and you want hearts or likes, I will absolutely heart and like your work, okay? You just gotta, you know, tag me on it and after I heart or like it, just, un just erase my name, I don't care. I will absolutely support you, give you hearts and likes, everything, okay? So um, don't be afraid um, to reach out and don't be upset if it takes me two months to find it because I never go on, I'm the worst, I'm the worst. All right. I love every one of you. I know you're gonna do awesome stuff with this information and we will have more continuing ad next month. Keep writing your email addresses below if you are not signed up for the QC um, mailing list. If you are not yet taking one of our courses, listen, <clears throat> I wouldn't be telling you we have a <clears throat> 21 day money back, no questions asked, money back guarantee if I didn't believe in this course. Why do I believe in it? Because I created it with QC because it is phenomenal education. What are you gonna learn at QC? You are gonna learn the fundamentals of makeup. Why are they called fundamentals? Because they work on everyone. When something works on everyone, it means it's foolproof, but it also means it's the basis for everything else. You will learn the fundamentals, which created every other trend, every variation. When you learn these, you are capable of anything. That's what you learn here. And that's why we have artists who are traveling with celebrities who are high up in brands, who've created their own brands, who are working on film and television sets, who are booked with brides for seasons to come. And this isn't a small number of people. This is an extraordinary number of people. We have people who've already done editorials in major magazines, who've been featured as artists in magazines like People. It's amazing what you'll be capable of when you learn appropriately, right? So have an awesome day, and I'll see you all really soon. Mwah!